What's going on YouTube? This is the Jedi 270 with Jedi Reviews. Get this camera straightened out. Um, what we're going to be talking about, I'm going to leave this terrible towel up here. Well, let's not. Let's just take the terrible towel away. We're not going to talk about the Steelers for a while yet. So we'll remove that and we'll just use bare wood. Uh, what we're going to talk about is we don't want to leave the truckers out. You know, I've been a big fan of Star Trek since I was a child. Uh, watching the original series with Kirk and Spock and company and uh, a lot of the uh, new reincarnations of Star Trek The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager. Um, not such a huge fan of Enterprise with Scott Bakula. Just kind of not my thing. I think maybe if I watched it a little bit more or was home when it was on the UPN, I might kind of dig it, but it's just, you know... I, I can't. I don't know what to say. I just don't like it. Um, there are a there is a line of action figures from Diamond Select Toys and Art Asylum, and this is the Board Collective edition. Um, for those of you who never watched Star Trek, you have no idea what the Borg are. The Borg are a cybernetic race that are hell bent on changing every human being into what they are and their beliefs because they're chasing perfection. Now, if you read the books from like folks like Peter David or Jerry Taylor, um, the Borg's history can be traced all the way back to the original series, um, the Doomsday Machine episode, which I've always thought looked like the Thanksgiving Horn of Plenty that ate stars. So, um, you know, I don't know if y'all felt that way. It was called the, the Big Maw. Um, it was a starship destroyer. Now, it's written in the books that Primitive Borg back in that time had constructed this machine um, to assimilate technology and bring it back home. And if you go up into the very first Star Trek movie, Star Trek The Motion Picture, um, Voyager 7 probe was launched. We all know that story in V'ger. Um, it's commonly believed that the Borg of that time actually captured uh, Voyager 7 and sent it out, reprogrammed it to find the creator so they could come back and assimilate that race. So what they do is they inject these nanomite things through their fingers and it goes into your little tiny robots and they go into your bloodstream and all, it pops all this weird like eye laser crap and it's, it's pretty scary actually. Um, so let's, let's take a look at the first one. Um, this one is the Cardassian board um, from the Diamond Select and Art Asylum. I've uh, got a lot of light going on right here. Let's move some of this around a little bit and see what we can do with it. Um, the one thing I don't like about these figures, now this one has about 11, uh, 18 points of articulation. The one thing that I don't like about it is the artistic license that people use when they want to change things. If something is a way, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's my outlook on it. I think the body armor and the bulkiness, like this piece right here, which is non-removable on this figure, is going a little far. Um, the Star Trek movie First Contact was probably about the best incarnation of the Borg I've ever seen. I really liked it. I dug it a lot. But these guys are just overly done in some aspects. But for the most part, it's still a pretty good looking figure because it's Borg, right? Well, when we get into this, um, if you watch the series or the movies, you'll know that the Cardassians are a very CIA, KGB ish kind of race. They're, and they have this huge quest for power, and they send out all these different agents and secrets and spy gadgets, and uh, they're, they're known to be very cruel, uh, especially to the Bajorans. But you take a proud race like this and you force them to be what you want them to be and you start watching this series and start watching the episodes, you'll understand that the Borg are pretty much uh, ruthless. Um, on this figure, you'll see right here on his hand, um, these are the assimilation uh, tubules come out and stick you in your neck similar to like a vampire would, and they start pumping these little robots into your body. Uh, the next thing you know, you get these little things popping out of your face, like over here. And uh, Once they get the basic outline that they want in the assimilation, then they turn around and they start laying you down on the table and putting all these hoses in. Um, these figures on the back, 
if you'll notice all of the tubes and everything you got the individual wires running it's a very highly detailed figure um, they actually look pretty cool you know but my only drawback is those big crab like arms you know because each individual board drone has a different uh, function on a board cube ship and they do different things you know so they got all kinds of different specialized skills so they all get different appendages um, almost every board will have a eye enhancement monocular kind of thing uh, going on uh, different laser devices and sighting things now if you look at the back of his head you'll notice that there's different colored copper lines running into his body um, where they attach there's a little puckering going on uh, the details pretty good you know you'd have to suspect that McFarlane had something to do with this um, I'm not sure because I still don't have the packaging so if any of you guys out there know if McFarlane had anything to do with these guys um, let me know and uh, we'll change it up on the uh, description uh, instead of doing separate ones of each one of these figures I'm just going to go ahead and review all three of them I said here is the Cardassian now the next one is the Herogen. Now the Herogen are a warrior cast of uh, the Jim Hadar. Uh, these guys are most likely seen on uh, Deep Space Nine. Uh, the next generation is where you see a lot of Cardassian and Deep Space Nine, but mainly they got their start on uh, uh, the next generation. These guys are pretty much kind of like a slave to the Jim Hadar, and they do all the hunting and the capturing and they are kind of like uh, the predator, if you will, of this group. Now down the back here you have spine protection. It's similar to a Klingon's battle uniform. Uh, in the front there's a little stomach plate here that pops up and you can see down here in his stomach, his torso, he's got that running all the way down to the crotch area. Um, his uh, simulation tubules are on the back of that hand. It's usually only on one hand. There are some that are specialized where they still have hands and not these um, these huge uh, computer or specialized tools that they carry. Now the cool thing about this particular one is the fact that that I like is you can take these stupid things off and it looks a little bit more borgish to what we're used to. You get rid of the big huge uh, armor plating, you know, you still see a lot of these joints in here. This one's also 18 to 20 points of articulation you've got a lot less going on, a lot bit less busyness down here um, as this guy here you can tell he's got two solid boots on whereas the Cardassian he's got bare metal toes happening on that foot um, the detail is just incredible like I said and as you can tell each one of them have their own little eyepiece here um, we get down in here, their faces are gray so it's hard to get down in there and show you the details of the face. You can see his eyes are individually hand painted right down to the wires running down his neck. Um, this is another race that's uh, very proud and a very strong race and they're not akin to being told what to do. So it seems like with this line that's basically what they're trying to get at uh, because the next one that we're going to do, everybody knows this race. Let's get these guys on here. And if you don't, where have you been over the past 40 years? Let's see here. More than likely not watching Star Trek, right? This is the Klingon. Okay? The, the Klingon Borg also, you can remove his armor, although I haven't done it to this one yet because it is slightly glued in there but easy to replace. They move up and down as well. Uh, everyone knows how proud the Klingon warrior is. They've watched the show. They know how Worf is. Um, they're all about duty and honor. And now you've got a, a race that's you know, stronger than they are and is telling them what to do. they got the little crab claw opens up here. Um, he also has solid boots on and then on the back you can see the traditional Klingon battle spine armor. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize about Klingons, and if you read the books, you'd know they have two of everything as far as their internal organs go. They've got two sets of lungs, um, two sets of, uh, they have two hearts, two kidneys, 
uh, or four kidneys rather, um, double of everything what a human has. And this is because they're so attuned to combat and hand-to-hand -hand combat and swords and battles and everything else. So if one fails, it's kind of like a shark loses a tooth, another one takes its place. Same thing with the Klingons and uh, their internal organs. They're almost impossible to stop. And you take this individual and turn him into this, and it's just really bad news. Um, as I said, each one will have its own little specialized arm appendage. Um, I wish they'd done a third one where there was no arm appendage on them, and I, like I said, I wish they'd done away with these big shoulder bells. But all in all, I mean, the detail is incredible. They're well worth the money. Um, I think I got one of them at a place in Owensboro called Collector's Mall. Um, it's kind of like the pawn shop of collectibles. You don't want to sell anything to him because he's going to rip you off. But you can buy some stuff at some pretty decent prices there. So if you live in Kentucky and you've never been there, uh, go down there and check them out. If you want to buy some pretty neat stuff, you can find all kinds of uh, loose figures. And that's a lot of fun of collecting is rebuilding loose figures to everything they were supposed to have. But these are the only three that Art Asylum made in the board collective. And each one of them comes with a little tiny board coin. Um, and I think there was like a little stand, but there's no place on the feet for them to stand on it. So uh, this one is 2002. Okay, so they came out in 2002. I was, I was kind of at a loss for the year that they were brought out. Now you can still find these on eBay at a pretty decent price. Some of them still in their packaging. Um, unless it's like my Star Wars stuff, I, I tend to take them out of their package. That's just all there is to it. That's, I like to look at them and hold them and that sort of thing. I'm a big overgrown kid. So, you know, I hope you've liked this, uh, this video for the Trekkers out there. Like I said, we have the Diamond Select uh, Art Asylum Board Collective and the Herogen, the Cardassian, and the Klingon Board Drones. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please uh, subscribe, rate, and comment. Come back and see us often. We're going to start going into a lot of different things like how to make money off of eBay, what's hot, what's not. Um, I'll give you some of the lessons that I've learned in eBay, how to make money off of it, how to obtain the right collectibles at the right price, the things that you like, the things that you don't, you know, get rid of them, and uh, make a little bit of extra money so you can afford the things you like. So that being said, we thank you for watching, and I thank you for your participation, and uh, thank you for your kind comments to come. Have a good one.